In this video, I'm going to show you how to lab in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to share with you how to create a defense, how you can learn defense, and some of the things that I break down in my coaching sessions that really, I think, can really help you uh, in today's video. So, uh, we're going to dive right in. Now, if you've never been to my channel before, what I do is I upload videos every single day that are designed to help you get better at Madden 21. And the only true way I know how to get better at Madden 21 is a couple of different ways. The first one is to practice, practice, practice. The second one is to play a lot. And maybe the third one is to learn from other people. Listen, learn, and watch as much Madden as you possibly can. And the reason I suggest you doing that is because it teaches you things about the game. You pick up little nuggets along the way. And what I hope we can do in this video, we're going to talk about every zone and what they do in a couple different scenarios as well for you today. So I'm really, really jacked up for this video. I'm pumped. I think this is going to be great. We're going to dive right in. I'm going to actually be sharing... Um, a lot of things out of my nickel 335 wide defense so if you want to get the full defensive guide that link is in the description so if you want to pick that up uh, the link is available for you if you want a free sample of the ebook go ahead and text me my phone number is 812-216-3644 okay so the way we're going to start this today is a couple we're going to go over two formations really we're going to go over this trips tight end uh, offset formation with the buck sweep uh, or the bubble screen and then we've got the gun bunch and then we're also going to talk a little bit about the gun bunch tied in potentially uh, if we have time to and then uh, the only other one that I wanted to really look at would be um, the five wide the gun empty hawk and let me grab the hawks unders the hawk slot post the vertical play and then there was another play it might have been it might have been the um, the not the slot post but the Y post. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. And then as far as a running set that we're gonna audible into, um, or we're gonna look at, we'll look at that down the road here. I didn't realize that Seattle had a bunch tied in in their live playbook, but they also have this Deuce Close. This Deuce Close is really really good from uh, Seattle. It's very similar to Ace Close. But anyways, we're gonna dive right in here. So bunch formation. And we're going to run some of the popular things. Z spot and go, clear out, bunch trail, flood. And then the other play that we're going to go ahead and grab is we're going to grab uh, a, a play that we can't create. Let's see here. Let me grab uh, the, the tight end corner route play. Where is it at? Bench pivot, I think is what it's called. Yep, bench pivot right there. Okay, perfect. So defensively, here's what we're going to do. We know from our research, right, that zone drops are kind of part of the game. You kind of have to use them, but I want to try to lab a little bit today and show you how to stop some routes without using zone drops. So we're going to kind of leave these on default for the first portion of the video, and then later on we're going to come back into that. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to mess around with these alignment things. So what we're going to try to do today um, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to work out of a default alignment, and then our cornerback matchups, we're going to put these on by speed. Um, and we're just going to test some things out here. So from an alignment perspective, so uh, three three five, and really you can do a lot out of three three five. So we're going to probably work out of that for the majority of the video, uh, either three three five or three three five wide. Uh, and the audible that we're going to go into from three three five wide is Tampa two or not Tampa two. I'm sorry, it's um, it's uh, Mike Blitz three. Okay, that's what we're going to go into. Um, yeah, so I think that's all we need to do. And then uh, nickel normal, we'll go ahead and set these really quickly. Uh, this is just something that I can go to. Uh, it's really more for match coverage. If I want to run match coverage, uh, this is where I can get it. So I'm going to grab a cover six. I've got the cover six invert, which is the, and I got cover cover four palms here. And then I'm going to also grab um, not cover three cloud, but I think cover three match. We'll grab that. Okay. All right, so three, three, five, and we're gonna come out in the play, uh, cover three every play. Okay, so if I can find it, there we go. All right, so first route that I want to learn how to stop, and when I want to learn how to stop something, um, I jump into practice mode. Right, uh, I think that's the best way to learn how to stop stuff. Um, so, a couple things that I know that people like to do. There's there's two big routes this year that are like people use all the time. The first one is a crossing route. 
The second one is a quarter route. Those are like the two main routes, and then also a motion slant. So those are like the three big things that people are going to do, and maybe the fourth one would be like a curl route. Okay, so we're going to lab a little bit of how to stop those routes and show you kind of the process by which I do that. And really it comes down to testing, right? It comes down to experimenting and testing and experimenting and testing, labbing. That's why we call it labbing because we're doing lab experiments in the science lab. That's kind of the, the where that comes from. So anyways, uh, let's just jump in here. So the first thing that I want to learn, honestly, the first thing that I want to learn how to stop is this route right here. Um, Z spot and go, max protect, uh, and the reason why is because zones do react a little bit differently whenever you only have, whenever you don't have that flat route out there, because the flat route pulls a lot of the zones outside, putting them in a better position to stop this. So we're just gonna run this as is. So this is a curl flat, curl flat zone on the slot corner and a hook curl and an outside third. Okay, so we know what zones we have now. If we watch here, this corner route, you see that the corner route's not open. Corner route is not open because the outside third will come down on it as long as it's on the wide side of the field. The other thing that you have to understand about Madden is zones work differently if they're on the wide side or if they're on the short side. So we'll also have to test that as well in this game or in this in this session. So the next thing I want to check here is let's take a look at Brown and see if Brown gets open. Does Brown get open if I pass lead to the right? Click on. Nope, he doesn't. Okay. So I now know that if people want to run this specific play, I have a, I have something that can stop it. The next thing I want to learn here is an adjustment because I know kind of what they're going to do off of it. And I'll show it to you out of this. And this is the play um, clear out SE out. And all I'm going to do is corner out Godwin, right? That's all I'm going to do. And what you'll notice here, as long as I'm on the wide side of the field, because this is a stock fade to Antonio Brown, you'll see that this should beat the cover three. If I pass lead that to the right, it doesn't beat it there, but normally it will beat the cover three. And I'll show you, I'll show you it one more time, and we'll show you how this does uh, against it. So, again, this is just standard cover three, nothing done to it whatsoever, literally doing nothing. And just take a look here. All I'm doing is pressing. But you see here, he gets over the top of that cover three, and it's a one-play touchdown for the offense. So now i got to say, okay, well, I know that that adjustment can't work. Or it can work, it just can't work like I you know, want it to work. So I've got to do something to stop that, right? Do something to stop it. So the next thing I'm going to try is putting that safety on the right side on an, out, an inside quarter. The reason why is because I'm thinking that that inside quarter will play that streak when he comes up the field. But you see here he doesn't. The inside quarter plays the uh, plays the streak route. So, um, but you know what I could I mean what I could do is is lab up and I could say okay if I put him on an inside quarter and then let's say they just block the tight end right let's say that they just block him they don't put him on a route. Now the question is does the does the inside quarter go with the fade? I don't think it will. Because it's a wiggly fade going to the outside. If you look, you see that. See how the inside quarter doesn't go with him. That's like a huge bummer to me. Um, if the inside quarter would go with him, I think that would be huge. But he doesn't. Okay, so we've got to figure something out. So the next thing is, what about how can I stop this corner route on this side of the field, right? How can I how can I stop this? Because I gotta have. That means that I have to go ahead and either put my corner in a deep half or I got to do something to stop that receiver. This is where lab work comes into, in my opinion, because one of the little tricks of the trade is you know that people are... Another thing you have to do is you have to ask yourself the question, what routes are going to go where? What routes are going to go where? So if I'm playing someone that's running um, the New York Jets playbook versus somebody that's running the Seattle playbook, the New York Jets playbook, that fade route is to the slot. In the uh, Seattle playbook, it's to the outside receiver. So by knowing the playbook, that also will determine how you defend this. So another thing that you could do from this is you could simply, because we know we want our user to be kind of in the middle of the field here. So another thing that you could do is you could take your linebacker and you could man him up onto that receiver right man coverage on that receiver now what you'll notice 
is if I try to run that same setup, whoops, that same setup that beats cover three, I should have, I, whoops, I should have a linebacker that's in position to stop this. See that? See how, I mean, he's, he's, he's behind him a little bit, but he catch, he, as long as you pass commit, he should get out there. And I'll show you this one more time. And clear out SE out, corner route to Godwin, and watch here. You see that he, that cross man gets back on him. I mean, if he makes a crazy catch like that, you can't do much, but he gets back on him. So I know now that I've taken that away, but every time you take something away, it opens something else up. So another thing that you have to realize is you have to start asking yourself the question, what are some other things that they're going to do? Well, another thing that they might do um, is they might take Antonio, like in this, in this scenario, right? What they might do is they might take... Um, and do something like this, right? Where they have Mike Evans running a clear out, like a streak. Um, or a lot of times he's going to be on a drag. So you, you see this a lot right here. Like this setup is very popular right now. Something as simple as this. And what you'll notice is if I... And the question that I'm asking is, does this cross man stop it? If this cross man can stop it, that's a huge win for the defense. Let me just watch this here. You see there's the crossing route. And we are able to hang with that just fine. We're able to hang with that crossing route just fine. So I now know in my bag of tricks, whether it be from 335 uh, wide or from 335 normal, I now know how to stop one play, you know, touchdowns at a bunch, right? So if they're running bunch, I know that the trick of it is to either man up the slot or to man up the outside receiver. And that will take care of a lot of different things that they're going to try to do. Now, the next question is, so let's say I did that cross band once more. So I'm going to cross band now from 335 wide just to show you, um, you know, just to kind of show you how it works. And we're going to drop this Mabel coverage effectively. Um, you know, what I would probably do is something like this. But anyway, uh, and then we'll just drop that out. Now the question is, if they motion this receiver over on a slant route, how does that cross band handle that? That's another question that I have. And you see that the cross man with that three wreck does a really good job of stopping the slant. So I now know, okay, I can stop motion slants. I can stop fades. I can stop everything with a simple cross man on that, on that receiver. Okay. Uh, maybe another question that you might want to, maybe another thing that you might want to stop is um, something like mesh posts, right? So we've all seen this setup right here. Um, you know, something as simple as this uh, is is very difficult to stop, okay? Something super simple like this. So I'll show you how to do this again. So same theory, I'm going to man him up on circle. On the circle receiver, he gets man up. The next thing is I'm using, obviously, over the middle. And then here, I would probably drop a hard flat, right? Now, as we're going to watch this here, what you're going to notice is, does this stop you see that that stops that, but it leaves that wide open. So those are things that you have to kind of pay attention to as you're developing your defensive scheme. What zones stop what, right? Everything stops something, but also leaves something open. And so this is kind of a little bit of a process that you can go through. Well, really what you're trying to do is, you're, number one, you're trying to get people to play left-handed, okay? So on defense... Your job is, once you start to figure out what they like to do, what their tendencies are, what their setups are, your job is to then try to learn how to defend that and take away the number one thing that they do. What's the number one thing that your opponent does? Your job is to take that away. So that's kind of where you start. And then from there, what you do is you play with your adjustments. You try different things. You use them different ways. Um, those are all critical, critical things to do. Most people with their user, they just kind of cover whatever they see. What I like to do with my user, and I think it helps me a lot because I'm not very good as a user, um, and this helps me be better. I actually have literally a path that I plan out pre-snap. I say, okay, I'm going to jump down to the short middle for a quick second, and then I'm going to jump down to the left side uh, post area for the second spot, and then I'm going to go jump to the delay fade, right, or something like that. I always have a progression that I'm going through a system that's going to help you because when you get in a game you're not going to have time to just kind of 
do it, right? You're going to have to adjust fast, and you're going to have to learn on the, on the fly what people are doing. That's why in the pre-play menu, I think it is so important to, when people are, before they're selecting their play, you have to think about what they're going to do before they do it. Because that way, once you have your idea of what you're going to do, when you get at the line of scrimmage, you can set your defense up and you can roll. Um, everything you've got to do really has to be intentional. So that's a little bit about how to lab. Obviously, we could do a lot more on this, um, but I wanted to leave it at this. If you want, if you have Madden questions specifically about zones or things like that, text me. My number is 812-216-3644. Also, if you want to get my 335 and 335 wide defensive ebook, that link is in the description. It's the best defense in the entire game by far, hands down, the best defense in the game, 100%. And every pro player is running it. Literally every pro player is running it. So I released it about a month ago. So far we've had really, really, really good uh, feedback from it. People like it. It's super simple, super easy to use. And people have seen a lot of success with it. It's just 15 bucks, And that link is in the description of this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope we helped you. And we will see you guys in the next video.